All right, fellas, what's going on? Denanu here, the man with the biggest and the most blackest privilege on YouTube. And in this commentary here, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2. Uh, more than likely, just the story bits of the campaign. Maybe we might get into a lot of the uh, the extras and the, the end game, as they call it, and things like that. But uh, this commentary is going to be just basically my review talking about uh, the story in Destiny 2, uh, basically just giving my thoughts on it now that I've beaten the campaign, what I think they, you know, should have did better. <laughs> I'm not going to say could have, but what, what they should have did better. And uh, just my overall impressions and on and things like that. So uh, first off, right out the gate, uh, I expected this game to be a whole lot better. And what I mean by that is, is Destiny 2 was so bad, story-wise, and so lackluster, that I figured they had to do better with Part 2. You know, it was just one of those things where it's like, you can't, like, if you start off with, like, shit, <laughs> you know, you have to get better from there. It's like you're at the rock bottom, so to speak. And not the good rock bottom, you know, not the good rock like, you know, Dwayne Johnson, but, you know, that that rock in the hard place rock where it's like, OK, this is your bare minimum of what you're going for. So it can only get better. So I knew it was going to be better than what it was. Um, I was somebody I played all the way through Destiny. I, I didn't play. I want to say the last two DLC contents because I didn't think they was worth it. But everything before I want to say. Uh, what was it called? Rise of Iron, I think is what it called. I think I played everything before Rise of Iron, you know, going going way back to when the game first came out. And the story in Destiny 1 was, like I said, it was, it was lackluster. It was piss poor. It was shit. There was no story. <laughs> uh, you know, so in this game, I figured, all right, they was going to come correct because they weren't going to have all the same problems that the first game had. The first game they basically sold everybody on a promise and then when they couldn't keep that promise instead of just coming out and tell people say hey look you know some things happen behind the scenes their business you know their company uh them being bungie and then you have activision who's the publisher uh companies don't ever like to take black eyes they don't ever want to seem like oh this wasn't a part of their plan you know because it makes them look bad so when the game came out, they had a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that messed up with the production of the game. Uh, I think one, I think the writer that they had either quit or got fired. Uh, the guy who did the music, uh, what was his name, Marty O'Donnell or whatever his name was, he was having issues to where like they fired him, but or he quit one of the two. So you had a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. So the end game of what we got wasn't the product that they wanted to ship if you know like if you guys understand what i'm saying so with this game i'm like okay you had what two or three years to bang this game out you already knew what your problems were you knew you knew what your communities liked so all you had to do was just focus on you know what made your community you know or what your community liked and then move forward and build the game around from there it's not hard youtube it really isn't um the only thing that that's hard game design wise i would say is just designing the game you know the mechanics the coding the programming all of that stuff as far as just giving a good story i mean hell i could think of a better story that they could have had it's not hard from like if you understand writing you know and i'm not a writer so i'm assuming writers can do a whole lot better because i'm just like an amateur at this shit, right so when i went into this game everybody was saying first of all i didn't buy the game when it came out Cause I'm somebody who I don't, if, if a company burns me the wrong way or I buy something that's a shitty product, I'm going to look at it and be like, you know what? Next time they're not getting my money. So I told myself, I was like, all right, when part two comes out, I expect it to be better, but I'm going to give it about a week, maybe two weeks. Then see what other people are saying about it. Go up, watch LPs of the game, you know, see what the game is all about in a hundred percent and then make my decision if I should buy this game or not. And that's pretty much what I did. I gave it about a week. I didn't buy it when it came out and I went on YouTube, saw what people were saying about it, seeing, you know, the gameplay for myself. And then I kind of, 
I was wasn't planning on getting it, you know, because I was like, all right, it did. It doesn't look like what I expected. But given the game is coming out now, and I know I'm a, I, I like first person shooters. That's like my thing. So you have a lot of first person shooters that come out during Christmas. You have Call of Duty, Battlefield, or uh, uh, what's the Star Wars Battlefront now is also coming out. I knew I wasn't going to get none of those games right off the top. I'm not a fan of World War II and that whole thing, and that seems to be like a resurgence when it comes to shooters now. So I, Battlefront didn't really impress me at all with the last one, so I'm not going to buy this one for that. I'm not buying Call of Duty this year. Uh, well, I have bought Call of Duty in like two years, but uh, two, two going on three. But I knew shooter-wise wasn't nothing else coming out, so I was like, well, fuck, you know? <laughs> it's either buy destiny something at least i know i can enjoy playing even if it's not gonna be what i expected or just not play any shooter games or find something on pc and i was debating whether to do player unknowns battlegrounds right because that looks like a lot of fun but everybody who i watch on youtube they are playing with other people and plus that's kind of like the same thing over and over and over again there's no variation in it right so that's what turned me off of that so I decided to get Destiny, I popped it in, and I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, Cause like I said, I was expecting it to be better, but it's like, they just said, fuck the first game. This game is gonna be a reboot. <laughs> it's like, like, they could have just picked up where the story left off and then just continued from there, but they just, they did. They, they didn't. Like, uh, yeah, the game has more cutscenes, and uh, like, don't get me wrong, I like that. That's that's cool. But the story was better than part one. I'm 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 not gonna say here. It's like it's the most shittiest story ever. It's not. But I think the problem was it could have been better. It could have been longer. It could have been, um, you know what what I wanted. I mean, I wanted. <sighs> I guess I'm kind of reaching because I wanted like that Mass Effect story out of it. Don't get me wrong, but it's I know that takes a lot of time to build. You have they have this great foundation, this great world building aspect of their game where people like the, the foundation that they laid. But it's just like with Destiny 1, they don't do shit with it. They don't build on the foundation they already got whatever they built at, at, at in destiny one they just decided to scrap that and just was like okay well let's focus on this game this is kind of sort of a reboot we're not going to mention anything that happened in part one no talk about the darkness whatever the fuck that was uh no talk about why are the alien races still there fighting when you pretty much damn near wiped out their leaders in the first game you know why are the same enemies even in the game since we since you took them all out in part one you know so it's like this game had a lot of issues like it, it, it was better don't get me wrong they introduced uh, a rehash race or all the all the rehash races in the game and you know now you have this other this bad guy called gall and he's taking away your light and that could have been like a great premise for the story like that's what i was expecting like when you jump in the game it's like okay the first mission this guy comes in whoops your ass takes your light away all the guardians light away not just yours and i'm like all right i can see where they go on with this if they make the story the struggle to get your light back let's say like you you gotta struggle in the trenches and take out gall and do all of this without your light so it kind of you know inspires you to get your light back to make you a better guardian to to show everybody like look a guardian isn't just their light you know, I'm like, all right, I can get behind this. You know what I'm saying? Show humanity at, at the very lowest depths it could possibly go, right? And then you rise up from there, a better guardian, a better person, taking out Gaul and all that. But no, no, they didn't do none of that. Like, I don't know if it's just Bungie. Maybe, maybe can't, maybe Bungie can't, you know, can't fucking write games no more. Maybe that's it. You know, maybe story just isn't their strong suit. Maybe they died with Halo 1 and 2. Because ever since, ever since then, like, every game that they put out has had a shit story. Halo Reach, Halo 3, although Halo 3 was kind of, you know, riding on the coattails of Halo 1 and 2, but with Halo, I feel that it's more just retreading the same ideas and the same, you know, the same topics that got you there, you know what I'm saying? So I can't really say Halo had a bad story, but it just feels like they're rehashing the same idea. 
then then you know then they made destiny which didn't have any story or the story that they had you know they had to take out and then you had destiny 2 which is like okay it has a story but it's not a typical story and and i'm not saying that in a good way i'm saying that in a bad way like if they didn't want to write a stereotypical story then that's fine but it's like, even with this, it's like they written a premise. Like you, 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 yeah, they told a story from beginning to end. You took down the main bad guy at the end, but it's like they didn't, it's like they gave, it, it reminded me of Halo Reach. I swear to God it did. Halo Reach, uh, for those of you who didn't play it, um, was pretty much the same. It was like, you saw, like as if you, you had a book in front of you. And let's say the book, was the whole war uh, between like, let's say like the human and the covenant, right? You saw certain chapters out of it, not the whole thing. And that was my main problem with Halo Reach. It was like, here, here's a cool, a bunch of cool set pieces, but you never showed how they got from one set piece to the other. Destiny's a little bit better in that regard because at least with Destiny 2, they showed you how you got from point A to point B. Some stuff they did pretty good. I'll touch on that in the next uh, couple minutes here, but as far as the, the 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 main story points, I wish they would exp you know I wish they would have expanded on them YouTube. I mean, because it, it seems like like I said, I don't know if this was the game that they wanted, or maybe the writer that they had was just some trash. But it could have been better, and that and that's what pisses me off because it's like I like the game, I like the world, but. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Just because I make a YouTube video, you know, talking about the game and talking about how I love it and it's the greatest thing ever. No, fuck no. I mean, if I had to give it a rating, I would say at least call it okay. It's good. You know, it's good when you compare it to Part One. It's not good when you compare it to other games. Like if I had to compare it to Mass Effect, no, Mass Effect shits on it. Hell, if I had to compare it to fucking Mass Effect Andromeda, <laughs> Mass Effect Andromeda shits on Destiny 2. <laughs> you know, it's... Story is not Destiny 2's strong suit. It can be, but I just don't know why they don't do anything with it. I mean, it's... I mean, and that's and that's, that's something that, that I find weird is because you have teams of people and you make millions and millions of dollars. Like, I don't know how much money Destiny 1 made, but I know it was damn sure it had to be in the millions. So you're telling me you can't write a better story than this bullshit that they give you? You know, there's no excuse for that shit, YouTube. It really isn't. You know, I, I, I just don't see it. You know, they can't give me an excuse as to why this game doesn't have, a, like, the greatest story out there. If you put the money and the time in, your shit will be good. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just the way life works. You know? But let me stop trashing the story. Let me get in depth with, um with what I'm talking about. The main thing, the story could have been a whole lot better. Um, what I do like about it, though, you have a lot of good characters in the game. They brought back a lot of the, uh, well, I thought say a lot, like they had a lot of people to begin with, but they brought back uh, the Vanguards from part one. Um, I guess that's pretty cool. I mean, they're like the only link that you had with, you know, certain other characters because, because they were the only other characters uh, that you had in the game. Uh, they brought back... Um, the ship lady, who, who I really like from part one, um, a few other people from part one, and they, it's kind of hard to explain because I don't know, I don't know what makes them better in Destiny 2 when I had to compare it to part one. I would guess their dialogue delivery is a whole lot better. They have all the same voice actors. Like you have, uh, I think his name is what, like Lance Rhetoric as, as the one main Titan guy who who was my Vanguard person because I was a Titan. And uh, you know they do great jobs. Like you know they all got the same voice actors. So it wasn't the voice acting that was shit in part one, but their delivery in part one was so bland. You know, it, maybe it, maybe it's because like maybe they had him read lines from a script and they didn't understand or they didn't give them the context as far as what they were reading. They were just like, here, read these lines, you know, and maybe that's why, you know, the delivery was off. Because in part two, if I had to compare like the same character like Zavala from part one and two in part two, they're a whole lot better. You know, the delivery is there. You can see some of his mannerisms, some of his character 
in and when he talks when he moves things like that um even with a lot of the newer characters too like uh what was her name hawthorne uh the woman with the hawk uh i liked her as a character she had a couple of snarky lines here and there uh, again she had a lot of character um i think they basically took or maybe their idea with destiny 2 was like okay what did people like about the characters from part one characters that had a lot of character they liked kate six they liked holloway um and they liked uh, a few other of those snarky characters so let's see if we can hack give everybody a little bit of character and i think that's what they did in with part two everybody you interact with in the main story hawthorne even the new um the new people and the old people uh the, the there was this one chick that you met on titan this military titan chick she was pretty cool uh I'm trying to think of other people um even some of the shop people were a little bit different i know they had somebody else as a cryptarch when you got to the farm and i was like yes i hope master raul fucking dies on the tower <laughs> right <laughs> because of what he did in part one but <laughs> giving people bullshit engrams but then, you know you know like once you beat the game and go back to the tower he was there i was like fuck <laughs> and i was mad as shit you too but but overall, I think the game, the characters were fine. It was just that the story that they kind of had you in uh, was a little bit lackluster. I think it could have been a whole lot better if they had, let's say, like every planet. It was only like three or four planets in the game, right? Same as Destiny 1. Nothing really changed in that regard. Um, I think it would have been better if they had, let's say, like three, maybe four story missions per planet. And then you moved on to the next one because you could do a story mission on let's say like earth and then like right after you do that story mission they're like oh we gotta go to titan so it's like okay you go to the next planet you do like a little intro mission there where you gotta reactivate something and then you do the story mission and then once you do that it's like okay now you go to the next planet. so it's like each planet only really had like one story mission you know and then you got to the end of the game and it was just like, okay, Assault the Almighty, which was Gaul's like big flagship that would destroy Suns. That was like that was like his big end game thing. And you had to, to, to do that. That was pretty cool. And then it was like, okay, stop Gaul and that was it. So the whole game really only had like maybe eight to 10 missions in it. So it didn't feel like it was super long. It had a lot of padding in there to make it feel like it was long like you uh the whole story campaign in part one you got this thing called what was called a sparrow and it was pr basically like one of those uh star wars speeders that you jump on and ride and you that's how you got around the maps right in destiny 2 you get one at the end of the story mode you don't get one like right when you start the game so they'll dump you in those same map areas and you gotta run from point a to point b in order to to get where you need to go and that's where it was kind of padding because that, you know, padded out the game's runtime because you have to run and fight your way through there and, and then to get to where you need to go. So that's why I can't really say, like, if they just started the story mission, like, right when you get to the planet, then the game would have been over in, like, four hours, four or five hours. It, it, the game was not long in, uh, in any kind of way. I think um, between running to different areas or having to stop and level up because certain missions have level requirements that kind of padded out the runtime too so i can't say that the game's length was like what i what i wanted it to be i'm not saying that you have to be like mass effect or like an old school japanese rpg where your game takes 80 hours to complete but i'm just saying have have enough story be there so that it makes your game a little bit longer like like for a fps game i would expect a shooter from let's let's say 8 to 12 hours because i feel like some games like to do like 15 to 20 and then i think the story kind of suffers in certain areas so i think maybe 8 to 12 anywhere around in there it you know that's good for most solid stories unless you're trying to get truly in depth into something let's say like a mass effect or like an rpg game where you have tons more story to go along in there but it was just one of those things that the characters in the game were fine. It's just that the story that they told could have been a whole lot better. Uh, what they had was decent. It, it was good. It, it was okay. You know, if I had to compare it to Destiny 1. But if I compare it to other games, it's still far lacking. Uh, art design was damn good. 
um you had a lot of redesigned enemies you know all the enemies in the game are basically just re re rehashed enemies for part one they made them look a little bit different but they had the same animations the same characters the same races all of that shit everything else everything in the game was the same uh what i did like about the art design though was the level design every planet felt a little bit different every story mission you went to that had you go to a different area looked different from the last game that's something that wasn't in Destiny 1. Level design was on point with this one. I mean, I will say that. I have to give credit where credit is due. Whoever was their level design guy, you know, you had a lot of platforming in there. You had a lot of different colors in there. Uh, Titan was like basically like an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. Earth was like a poured out, overgrown city type area with buildings and, you know, open fields. Um, Io was just like all rocky desert type places, but uh, it, it, level design was on point. <laughs> and I can't even lie about that. I'm not even gonna bullshit in there. Be like, oh, level design sucks too. No, nah, can't do that. No, nah, level design was on point. Music was on point too. Uh, I wasn't expecting the music to be great because in Destiny One, uh, music was also shit. So I think outside of the main theme of destiny one from the main menu i can't think of any other song that they played in, in the game i'm sure that they had it but nothing nothing was memorable at all uh with destiny 2 i don't know who what guy they got <laughs> but <laughs> they need to keep him <laughs> um you had a lot of moments in the in the story missions where the kind of like the gameplay dropped down to zero and you had a whole lot of that uh early on in the story it, it felt like you shoot three enemies, walk 10 minutes, shoot three enemies, walk 10 minutes. It kind of had a, it, it wasn't like it was constant fighting from point A to point B. Um, I thought that was kind of bad because that kind of takes you out of the action, you know, when you want to jump in there. But during some of those periods, they, uh, you had great music playing. Like um, when you got your light lost and you was walking through the city and stuff like that. Uh, they was playing sad music when you got outside and you had to traverse this icy like mountain field type areas the music would change and you had a lot of epic sounding music when things were you know being epic or even when things were not were being epic so <laughs> music was great music was great um trying to think what else um i still think they should have had more missions per planet like that's a, that's a concept that, that I think that they could really flesh out the story more maybe add you know depth to a lot of the new characters and stuff like that but they just didn't do that like how I feel like they should have added a lot of stuff is keep what you have I'm not saying that, you know that they should scrap the game and you know re rewrite the game from jump but I think the devil's in the details like they always say like that moment when you got kicked off of uh, what was it, the tower, and you landed on the ground, the only thing that I thought of, and I'm guessing you know maybe Bungie was looking at like, oh, this, oh, this moment is gonna be epic because they have you walking around with like no weapons, right? And it's it's supposed to be sad and depressing and everything. And the only thing I was thinking about, I was like, this is some bullshit. Like I don't know if the people who make Bungie or not people who make Bungie but if Bungie the people who make Destiny 2 maybe they think their game is more epic than what it is <laughs> but when I was at that point I was like okay well why can't I walk around I'm, I mean I'm not obviously hurt because I'm, I'm still walking so you know it, it, it was just one of those things where I think that scene could have been done a whole lot better I get what they were trying to do they were trying to make it seem like this is your lowest point your lowest moment you know that kind of sort of thing but I think I think the game would have been far better, far better if you lost your light during the whole campaign. Let's say you got your light back at the end of the game. Let's say I can understand them, you know, because you have to play the game, right? So give you something, give you maybe one of the subclasses and um, let's say, I don't know, but what should have reason in there? Let's say the Guardians make some kind of device that channels like a small portion of light or whatever to your character. So that gives you, let's say, one super, right? And, um, you know, because you have to have the mechanic in there in order to play the game. They're not going to make a game without having the supers and all of that. So 
I mean, if you have to have it, do something like that. But, but make it so that you don't get your light back, like, in the next fucking mission. Like, it's like, what's the point in taking the light away if you're just going to get it right back? <laughs> you know? It, it, that, that whole segment just, I was, I was sitting there like, okay, this is some bullshit. So, like, so you're telling me I just get my light right back. You know? I don't have to earn it. I don't, I don't do none of that shit. It's like, no, just go here, fight a couple fallen of enemies, and, oh, look, I got my powers back. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't everybody else go to that shard of the traveler and you know get their light back? I don't know YouTube. I mean, in the story they were like, oh, the the, the traveler chose us and gave us our light back and everything like that. So maybe like you know they they made it seem like only you had your light back, so only you can go out and do shit. But that's why I think it would have been would would have been a better story if let's say like you lost your light. And let's say none of the Guardians had their light and they had to stop Gaul and do all of this stuff without none of their powers. And then, you know, that kind of, that, that, that proved to them, like, okay, we're Guardians even with or without the light. It makes for a better story and a better um, motivation, so to speak, other than just, oh, we need to stop Gaul. Because Gaul, at the end of the day, didn't really do anything. He, he came, assaulted the city or whatever, and like, that was it. The only thing that they ever showed him doing in the cutscenes was just talking to the speaker. And granted, I mean, he sounds cool, but I mean, if he's supposed to be this big, epic bad guy, show him doing epic bad guy shit. At least with the Taken King, I forget what his name is, but at least he decimated the Reef. They came at him in full force and he wrecked their whole shit. You know, Galt was just, you never saw him do anything badass. Why was he more so important than any other grunt soldier besides him wearing different armor? You know? I think that they should have showed him a little bit more. Let's say um, they had this one cutscene at the end of the game where you were, while well, the Guardians and everybody was storming his place, right? They should have had a moment where it showed Gaul, like when he stepped out on the battlefield, he just wrecked shit. And that was why he was so big and badass, but they, they, they didn't do nothing like that. Honestly, with the story that they had in Destiny, uh, like I was saying before, like if they kind of showed humanity at its lowest moment you know or let's say if let's say besides having gall in there if they brought in uh newer unknown enemies you know that the guardians and stuff had to figure out how to fight so instead of having gall and rehashing you know all the other enemies from the first game if you just introduced like this new enemy and just popped them in there and they just came in there and wrecked the guardian shit and you know the guardians was like oh who are these bad guys and they was like I, we, we don't know we have no info on these guys and you had to figure out how to fight them let's say you try your all your light powers and like your light didn't work to kill them you know do something like that to flesh out the game give us something new to, in, in, instead of rehashing items from the first game um i think the game would have been great or, or maybe one of the greatest games instead of just being okay or it's kind of good you know it's destiny 2 i mean i like the game for what it is but it, it's it's nowhere near where i want it to be i mean so if like if I had to give it a rating, I mean it would probably be like I don't know if like one and two is unplayable, and let's say five is just average, I'd had to give it around like a five or a six, maybe six and a half. I mean, is it a ten out of ten? Fuck no. Is it anywhere close to that? Fuck no. <laughs> you know, but it is competent. It is better than its predecessor. It uh, it's basically a rehash of the first game. I mean, that's basically what it is. If you're somebody who never played Destiny 1 and then picked up Destiny 2, it's it's basically a better reworked, rehashed version of Part 1. That's exactly what it is. Different characters, uh, better characters, better story. Instead of, you know, switch out the darkness and put Gaul in there and he's the main threat, then, you know, because in Part 1, they never told you what the darkness was. It was just like a vague concept. Hell, the, the thing themselves didn't even know what the fuck the darkness was so it, it, it's just something that could have been a whole lot better and that's the part that kind of makes me mad like i was saying before like bungie and activision make millions and millions of dollars off destiny what the fuck are they putting the money into those bullshit marketing commercials 
because like it's it's not in the game youtube <laughs> it's definitely not in the game and then on top of that you have microtransaction bullshit in there which i'm not a fan of none of that shit because i feel like if you have a good game your game should stand on its own merits rather than just you know giving us bullshit and then charging us for it granted i know you don't have to buy microtransactions so for me they're not a big deal because i could just say no i'm not buying that bullshit and i haven't bought a microtransaction yet and i probably won't ever buy one but it's a way of exploiting kids that's how i see it and granted i mean hey people you know people do whatever they want i mean hey it's their money so that's why half of me i don't like it because I don't I see where it's kind of driving the industry right now. So that's where I kind of hate it in the medium that I love. But the other half of me is like, I don't give a shit about that because people control, you know, people control their own money. And if they're too dumb enough or don't have the will not to do it, then that's on them. I could, I could care less, <laughs> you know, but Destiny 2 could have been a whole lot better. Is the story the greatest thing ever? Hell no will you have fun playing it if you if, if you like the destiny kind of sort of thing yes it it, it can be fun uh if you're somebody who who's never played destiny one and you you got a couple friends to run through the story with and have fun then yes if that's your cup of tea then yes you will probably enjoy destiny two um if you're somebody who let's say didn't like destiny one and you think that you may enjoy part two i would say that depends on what you hated out of Destiny 1. If that was the character grind, or let's say you didn't like the story all that much because you value stories, let's say like I do, and you want something a whole lot better, or if uh, you know you want a game that's gonna last you a really, really long time, or, you, or something you wanna get fully wrapped up in, then Destiny 2 is gonna, it's, it's basically similar to part one, so you're definitely probably not gonna like Destiny 2. Um, because even with some of the end game stuff, it's just more of the same. You have strikes, you have raids, you have multiplayer, uh, you have a lot of the, the miscellaneous missions that you can do on planet to planet, which give you bigger and better gear and all that stuff. It's all about the grind in, in the end game. So I would say if you're, especially if you're somebody playing solo and you don't like none of doing none of that extra stuff by yourself, then I would say destiny. Yeah. Don't get destiny skipping. It's not going to change your mind. It's not going to be that one game you latch on to if you want a lot of depth out of your game. Um, people keep calling it a, a quasi MMO. It's nothing like an MMO. You can't get wrapped up in it like, you know, like an MMO. An MMO have, has hours and hours of content and stuff you can do. Destiny isn't like that. You could probably rank all the way up to max rank in probably a week or two, maybe three, if you play and, and, and put in the hours like that. So I'm not going to get on here and be like oh oh destiny 2 is you know has a lot of depth no it doesn't <laughs> no it doesn't <laughs> the only depth comes from i guess the end game content you have the raid which is pretty decent that's that's uh something where you and a group of buddies can go into and puzzle solve your way until you fight the end boss but that'll give you just you know that'll just give you more gear at the end of the day you know so and uh that gear will be like the best gear out there until bungie drops like the next dlc and then that will be the best gear and then uh, when they drop the one after that that will be the best gear so you're never getting good gear i mean if they keep the same uh dlc principles behind like they did with part one every dlc that they came out with the gear either got better or the light level changed and so all the top gear that you had became kind of worthless to where you had to either re-upgrade it all again or get newer shit so that's that was the one thing about destiny i didn't like because i felt like the game was the grind and that's I, i'm not into grinding like that don't get me wrong i i can do it but grinding just to have them lower my gear and lower my stuff back down now now fuck that but anyways guys sorry about rambling on and making this really long video <laughs> but i wanted to get all my thoughts out there and everything but basically like i said um destiny 2 was an okay game if you like destiny and you wanted more of it buy part two if you didn't like destiny and hated it like a bunch of people out there like i know i fucking hated part one and, and what it was but i'm a fan of the world and the game that they made you know i still like it so that's the only reason i bought this one but if you're somebody who hated everything about it don't buy part two it's not going to change your mind 
Uh, the only way I would say if you're one of those people like that, and, and I would say buy part two only if you have like three or four friends, three or four friends to play the whole game with. Outside of that, don't uh, don't buy it. Probably I, I wouldn't even rent it. I mean, just wait, wait until something better comes out. There's going to be a lot of games coming out this fall. So anyways, guys, my name is Dananu, the man with the biggest and the most blackest privilege on YouTube. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.